you have a Whirlpool Cabrio washer that sounds like this. It's getting louder and louder by the day. Let's show you guys how to put a bearing kit in there. Okay, so I hauled the washing machine into the garage. Uh, in case anybody's curious, this is a Whirlpool Cabrio model WTW8240YW0. Again, it's WTW8240YW0. Uh, it's about maybe eight years old or so. I bought this when I bought this house. Um, so again, we think the spindle bearings are bad. It's starting to get kind of, uh, or tub bearings are bad. It's starting to get kind of loud. Uh, so we're going to take this thing apart. Step one is to take the agitator out. There's normally a little silver cap that covers this up, but mine broke on, broke on this one years ago, so I never replaced it. It was not a cheap part. So take a 716 socket and just buzz this nut off here. Or bolt, not nut. What am I saying? Sorry, guys. I haven't had my coffee yet. This should just slide right off. Should the operative word. There we go. Agitator's off, nice and dirty. We'll clean all that stuff up garden hose later. Set this aside to go outside for cleaning. Next, you'll see that there's a bunch of Phillips screws at the bottom there. Those all have to come off. Um, gonna use a screw gun for that one. Might want to brush them off with a with a with a bristle brush just because there might be some crud in those uh, in the slot on the Phillips. Got my handy dandy screw gun. I don't know if you guys can see all this. Give you a gander just what so you can see what I'm doing. Let's just take all these screws out. Looks like there's six of them. Nice, they're stainless steel. I guess they have to be to survive in a washing machine, right? Before I get too far into this, let me show you the kit from Whirlpool that uh, that they sell you to fix this problem. Okay, so this is the part uh, that Whirlpool sells, or I guess the kit that Whirlpool sells to, to fix this problem. It's uh, part number W104353032. Again, it's W104353032. And in the kit comes two new bearings, a seal, some fasteners, a spacer, grease, adhesive, and a new shaft. So this is actually the, the drive shaft that runs your whole washing machine. This is the bottom, and this splines into the motor. This is the top section, this splines into the tub, and that bolt we took out that holds the agitator screws into here. So they give you the whole kit. Uh, again, I think it was just about 85 bucks for this. Look online though, search around, because I've seen it uh, as high as just over $100. Uh, I bought this from Walmart and it was um, about 80 85 so do your homework, do your research. Now that kit is a lot easier to install if you buy the installation tool. The installation tool is part number W104477843, again that's W104477843, and it comes with this press, piece of PVC pipe, and these two bars right here that kind of screw onto this press. And um, it is possible to install this kit without tool, but it's a heck of a lot easier. And I, I stole this. I think I got it for 30 bucks or so, I think also from Walmart. Uh, normally, I think it's close to the price of this kit. So I'm happy. Uh, all in, I'm probably under the price of a service visit. So I'm ahead of the game here. Now, while that might be the part number for my washer, I think I neglected to mention you should check to make sure that is the correct part number for your washer. Um, I don't know if there's just one kit that does all these or um, if there's slightly different kits for, for different models. Again, this one's about eight years old. Maybe the newer ones take a different model, so don't hold me to that. So all those screws have been loosened. Now I'm just going to lift that collar out. Put you guys back on the tripod so I don't give you motion sickness. Screws out. And you can actually see the part of that stainless steel collar. I think that's what it is there. Oh, Got to take a couple of these screws out a bit more. So that, that, 
Yeah. Piece just lifts right off, nice and dirty. Got to set this aside for cleaning. And I believe this piece has to come off. There we go. Also going to set that aside for cleaning. Very disgusting. Smells lovely. Now the tub should ride up and down smoothly. I don't think this one does. There it goes. All right, so now I think we're done with this side. Uh, we got to flip it on its, uh, actually we're gonna take this top off. So we're gonna tape the lid down just to make sure it doesn't open and damage something or damage you. I'm just gonna use some blue tape. Tape it shut. Now, if this wa if your washer is as old as mine or close to it, this is actually a great opportunity to clean out the inside of your washer. It's starting to smell kind of nasty because this top section has to come off. To give you great access to the tub. So rather than using that afresh or whatever. You can actually mechanically clean it and do a much better job. This should be enough tape. Okay. So now to remove the top, I'm going to take a nut driver, which is a quarter inch. And there's two little clips in the back. I'll show you what to do there. Change positions. So I take out the top screw here. Again, quarter inch nut driver. And this one here. Set those aside, don't lose them. Uh, I think I just shot myself in the foot a little bit. Because this tape is going down too far. Not to be able to slide. Bloopers are included free of charge. Now this should slide forward like so. I think it lifts and tilts backwards. That was something I had trouble with. Okay, now that we got our top slid forward a little bit, our tape is moved, should be able to just kind of, should pull forward and lift up. Should be in the operative word. Ah, still got some little bit of So this one's free. There we go. And now you should be able to just lift this up and tilt it back. Now is a good time to make sure your tape is secure though. However much you ended up using. Now you can get a good view of what your washer looks like on the inside. Pretty gross, huh? So we're going to take this cover off here. It just clips in place around the edge here, all the way around. I have to disconnect this hose. I'm going to lift this off, uh, and then we're going to clean, take the inner tub out. I'm just going to go around and kind of work these out, these little snap-in things. 
great because this washer is starting to stink. There. Here. Here. Here, that one there. Okay, that's almost all. We get a pair of flyers to pick up that hose clamp. I just worked the hose off with a pair of pliers. Now this ring lifts out. Set that aside for cleaning. Now I believe the inner tub should lift right out. Oh wow, that's gross. Yuck, no wonder this thing stank. Look at that, guys. Disgusting. Wow. All right, let's get the tub out of there. What's up, buddy? You curious? Hi, puppy. Throw our backs out. Should just lift out. I don't think there's anything left holding it. Unless I am mistaken. What else could be holding it? It was loose before, it moved up and down. You guys did see it move, right? There's something else in here, I think. No. Let's give that a little wipe down a little paper towel and see if I missed a step somewhere. I think I did. Is that what the shack looks like? Got a nice big shoulder on there, so that's just the shaft sticking out there. That's the shoulder and the shaft, that's not going to go anywhere, so it just needs to slide up here. So, what's the problem? I'll do it off camera, I don't want to bore you guys with this. I had it with the PB blaster. still pretty good and stuck on there. Not sure why. It just needs a little bit of cleaning. I don't know. You get a little wire brush. You're not a wire brush, a toothbrush. I clean up in that area and see what we're dealing with. The pros are probably all laughing at me. Oh look at that guy, he's an idiot. You can hear it now in the comments. Been done by now. Oh well, I'm not a pro. Sorry. I'm just an average Joe working in Joe's garage. Not my day job. A little mallet. We're placing this shaft anyway, so I don't think we really care about it. We damage it. Jeez. What is up with this thing? I need a drink. I'm going to try an old mechanics trick. I don't know if it's going to work or not. We're replacing the shaft anyway. I'm going to take my air chisel, stick that on the shaft. I don't really have a good angle, but it's, there we go. I'm going to lift up and just blip it. I did it. So 
So if you happen to have an air chisel, easy way to get the tub off, or easier. So it's not too gross in there. I was expecting it to be worse. I mean, it's not wonderful, but that's easily cleaned. This tub, on the other hand, the inner tub, that's a little dirtier. So we'll set that aside for cleaning too. I took a paper towel and swiped it across the seal. Man, this is gross. The seal is right here. So in theory, this seal is letting water pass, and that's what's making those bearings noises, I think. I am not a professional. What the heck do I know? Gross. I think I'll drag this closer to the garage door and uh, so we can maybe hose this out a little bit. I won't bore you guys with the cleaning process. So I spent the last uh, half an hour or so cleaning. It was pretty disgusting in there. I mean, it's not perfect now, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. Um, I used a garden hose and some simple green and a toothbrush and a stiff brush to get most of the crud off. This piece is by far the worst. Make sure you clean the bottom of it too. Bottom gets nasty. See, there's probably an eighth of an inch of crud on there. I'll hose it down one more time, but it's, uh, it's a lot better than it was. Okay, now it's time to take that bottom motor assembly off. And do that with a quarter inch Allen key. I believe there's Loctite on there. Just gotta buzz it off with the impact driver. And if you see rust in here, that's a good chance that your seals are gone, which has made this repair absolutely necessary. If you don't see any rust, you may have caught it early. I suspect that I did. Come on. Sometimes these things, uh, this bolt loosens up and this thing will loosen up from the back and forth motion and you'll get a kind of a rattling noise. Um, I believe when I had this thing, when I fixed that, I put some blue Loctite on those threads to prevent that from happening. And of course, this duly stuck on there now so you manhandle that off just jostled it back and forth and, and it came off um, check the condition of the splines in here make sure they're not stripped or bent over or anything uh, if they are you'll need to replace this part uh, I forget how much it is I think I had to replace mine because when this bolt loosened up uh, there was no clamping force and these splines stripped out so now you have your stator coils here and what the computer does is it just sends current through those coils to make this rotor with the permanent magnets turn. So there's really, this is a pretty simple design. There's not much to go wrong here. You don't have that big, um, that motor with a, with a big cast iron gearbox that you used to see in the, I guess the early 2000s and 90s, the whirlpools of the past. This is much lighter. Um, obviously the controls and the computer are more complicated, but the actual drive assembly is pretty, pretty simple. So next step is to take this stator coil off because we need to get the shaft out and take these four bolts off. Uh, they look like 716s. Let's give them a shot. Maybe I'll get lucky. Nope, three A's. Good socket. Thank you, three A's. Maybe we'll switch to metric just to make things more interesting. Who knows? Today could be that day. Give it a shot. Yep, three A's. So we'll take those whiz those four bolts off. One. Oh. Did I just lose power? Oh, the battery came off. Put it aside. Two. Three. Side. Put this ring, this grease under there. I don't know if supposed to be grease there. So you pros and say, no, nope, there is, you idiot. You shouldn't be doing this. You should be called a professional. Yeah, I know. I know, I know. I'm a horrible person. 
beer of the day is a Corona Extra. All right, enough babbling. So now we're gonna take this coil off. I'm, I'm sure, assuming that that ring that we just took off held this on, so it should pop it up. It pops off like that. And there's probably a wire in the harness we have to disconnect here. Uh, yes, there is. What do we have here? Let's see. Okay, so here's a connector here. So we have a connector here. Right here. And it looks like we have one right here, too. And of course, they're being difficult. I wonder, can we just, like, move this out of the way? Without taking it off? Maybe we can do that. Yeah, that's not a tragic amount of tension around. We'll leave that hooked up. Alrighty, so now we got to take this nut off, and you can see one of the bearings right here at the edge of it. So let's go see what size nut that is. That nut is inch and a quarter. So I got a deep inch and a quarter socket from the vault. And we'll see if we can buzz this off with the impact driver. Possible to spin the shaft, we'll see. These impact drivers can work wonders sometimes. Ah, oh, look at that. Not a problem. Um, okay, so now we just got to whack that shaft out. Well, I'm going to put some towels in the tub just so when it comes out it doesn't damage the tub. Don't know if it will or not, but better be safe than sorry. Grab this mess of rags over here, this pile of rags. I'm going to throw these in the tub to catch the shaft. Decent lucky, right? So let's uh, whack it with our trusty cook mallet. There it goes. Look at that. And the shaft should just come out. And it does. So this is what the old shaft looks like. Right here. And you can see, it looks like we do have a seal failure because I see rusty stuff beyond this sleeve. Interestingly, the, the shaft appears to be a different design. Or, no, it's not. Never mind. Yeah, so it looks like water was starting to escape past here. You can see right there, there's some rust. So it looks like we got it early on. But yeah, so that's the old seal. The, the sleeve that it rides on, and the bottom of the shaft is right here. So we'll set that aside. Now, our installation tool comes with this wonderful steel rod right here that we can use to smack the bearings out. So I think we'll smack the one from the bottom, the bottom bearing out first. You guys will get a wonderful view of that. So I'm crawling inside the tub. What's the old bearing? The old bearing is a nice MSK. And they gave us Chinese bearings to replace it. How thoughtful of them. But this bearing feels wonderful. It is the same part number. MSK. Doesn't look like I damaged it taking it out. So I'll throw this in my bearing board and it feels wonderful. Why not a good bearing, right? Clean it up a little bit. Yeah. 
and they're nice enough to give you Chinese ones to replace it. Now what we'll do is move our magnet out of the way, take our mallet, and we'll whack that other bearing out. Back. Now we can catch the lip of the other bearing. Just like that. Let's set this aside. Try not to damage it. There we go. Same deal. See what that one looks like. Oh yeah. We definitely had some seal failure there. See all the crusties on the edge? Some rusty stuff. This is starting to get kind of wonky. It's not terrible, but it was time. So you shouldn't see any of this rust around here because that indicates that water got behind there, which indicates a seal failure, which we knew because we saw water past that seal. This bearing sat on there like that. And we saw water right there. So, didn't it kill the lower bearing yet, but it was into the upper. That's exactly why we're doing this job. All right. I'm going to take a quick break, have a sip of beer, clean up my hands, and then we'll clean that area up and start putting it back together. Spray a little bit of brake cleaner on a paper towel and just clean down inside here and on the other side too, just to keep things nice and clean because we do have to seal that, uh, that new seal in place and we want to make sure that there's no grease that's going to inhibit the, the bond of the sealant. So I think right now we're ready to start assembling uh, our bearing press to suck in the new bearing and seal, new bearings and seal. Okay, so this is what the press uh, or the installation tool looks like with every all the pieces assembled on there. So from top to bottom, this is the inside of the machine, so this is the inside of the tub on this side. You have a nut, you have this rod that's facing towards the bottom of the machine, you have your... Uh, bearing driver for the larger of the two bearings then you have the larger of the two bearings the sleeve this washer thing is spacer the smaller of the two bearings the uh, bearing driver for the smaller of the two bearings this thrust bearing here and then a nut so this whole assembly goes into the machine like that so what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble this taking this nut off. I'm going to leave this stuff here, just like so. And then this is going to go into the, the belly of the machine, the, the, I'm going to go into the tub. And uh, I'll show you what I'm doing in there. Again, all we have on here is this arm aiming towards the bottom of the machine. That's the bottom. This is the top. You have the nut, the arm aiming that way, the bearing driver for the larger of the two bearings and then the larger of the two bearings right here and then the shaft so we're going to insert this yeah, i can do this one-handed this is going to go in like that and that arm is going to sit up on that ledge there and hopefully it's going to stay there I guess I probably should have put this thing on its belly rather than on its side because now that arm doesn't want to stay there. I'll just put some tape there to hold it in place. But that's what you got to do. Okay, so we got the shaft sticking out the bottom of the washing machine. Get our old parts out of here. It's just the old nut and the old washer. Very greasy. Probably should have gotten it before I washed my hands. Okay, so now, get that out of the way, I'm going to put our spacer on, like so, 
so. With the washer on, I don't think it matters which way it goes. Put this on like that. Just like so. Put our thrust bearing on. And then we'll put this nut on. And to suck the bearings in, all you gotta do is tighten this nut. It's a nice, uh, nice easy setup. Uh, what does it look like, a three quarter inch to you guys? Let's go see. And in case you're too far away and you can't. Whoop. Sorry about that. I dropped you. It's one good thing about GoPros, they're pretty durable. So that's what the bottom looks like. Just like that. Hope you guys didn't throw up on the way down. Jeez. Sorry, three quarter, what was I smoking? 15 16 socket, or 15 16 nut. Now we just gotta tighten this. It doesn't take a lot of force. I'm being pretty gentle with it. You can see where my hand is. If I had to put a lot of force, my hand would be up here. It might start getting a little bit tougher now. So the, the bottom bearing looks like it's bottomed out because, I don't know if you noticed when you installed this cup, but the bearing is recessed in the cup. So once um, the cup reaches this aluminum flange here, the bearing will be at depth. It's not going to push in the bottom bearing anymore. So right now all it's doing is sucking the, the top bearing. And I think it's bottomed out. Let's take this out and have a look. And I can tell because it, you can just tell it, you kind of hit a wall. You're not going to, you know, more force doesn't really get things in there anymore. So I think we're where we need to be. So let's take this puller out for the installation tool. So that's about the depth of the prior lower bearing. And let's take a look on the top. This time I'm not going to drop you, I promise. Ugh. All right, let's take this out. Take our installation tool out. And there we go. So that bearing is just below the surface. So that tool makes quick work of that. Not very difficult to do at all. I mean, I suppose if you had a bearing, race, and seal driver set, you could probably make it work that way too, but this is a heck of a lot easier. It's designed for this. So now that we have the bearings pressed in at the correct depth, now we have to install the shaft. So as a reminder, this is the top of the shaft. The bottom of the shaft has threads right there. So we're gonna insert the shaft into the machine like this. And then we take our new nut that came in the kit, which is in my right hand. It has a little bit of thread locker on there. And we're just gonna snug that down. I'm gonna crawl into the belly of the machine and attempt to insert the shaft. Now it's possible that spacer, that collar inside, may have moved out of position. It might make this difficult. If it does, I'm going to take the old shaft and use that as kind of an alignment tool. Let's see how it goes. Maybe it won't be too much. Maybe I'll get lucky. Let's see if that works. 
This thing's giving me fits. So what I did is I lightly bolted that stator coil assembly back on. I'm gonna flip the washing machine uh, right side up and I'm gonna see if I can get all the spacers and whatnot to align that way um, since gravity won't be pulling them down as they are now. We're pulling them out of alignment as they are now, as it is. So the misalignment problem is quite clear now. I don't know if you guys can see that, but one of those spacers is clearly out of whack. So let's see if we can line it up with a screwdriver. Okay, I got it lined up as best I could. Let's see if the shaft goes in now. One handed. Maybe, maybe not. It looks like it's aligned. That's not going in all the way. Might still be some misalignment, let's see. Not the easiest thing in the world to do. Yeah, so tilting it up didn't help much. I'm trying another tactic. So, it seems to be getting hung up on the same spot all the time. I'm just showing you on the old shaft. There's actually a lip right here on the shaft. You can't really see it, but if you run your fingernail along it, you'll feel it. And that seems to be where it's getting hung up every time. So what I did is I stuck the new shaft in the freezer with the hopes that it'll shrink down, you know, maybe a thousandth of an inch or half a thousandth of an inch, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, so I'm gonna let it cool down, it'll, it'll shrink, uh, and then we'll try putting it in again. While we're waiting on the freezer, let's yank the seal out of this bearing and see how bad it is inside. Normally you can do that with a seal pick. Just get it between the seal and one of the races and just pop it out. A little tough to do one-handed. There we go. See how bad it is. It's a nice bearing. It's a shame. Pretty high quality. Let's uh, do a little spritz of some brake cleaner. Yeah, it doesn't feel all that lovely. Stick in the parts washer, see if we can save it. Probably not, probably not worth it. And one interesting point is that the seal design has changed, it looks like. This is the old seal. And you can see that it's uh, raised a little bit above the, the flange of the seal. This one's flat. I mean, it could be just because it's worn. This one looks like it has part number. It's very small, I'll try to read it, W105. 02879 very fine print right there and I don't see that number printed on here anywhere this one does have FSP on there up there that name does sound familiar for some reason the flip side of the seal is also different hopefully you guys can see that so I don't know if this means that Whirlpool found a problem and they corrected it, or their supplier did, or what, but the seal design is definitely different. If 
hopefully they made it better, right? While we're waiting for the, uh, the new shaft to get nice and cold, some pretty serious corrosion on the shaft right there. Where my thumb is right there. And there's some corrosion up on the neck by the splines too. So I think it's nice that this kit includes a shaft so you don't have to worry about that because that uh, doesn't look so hot, especially right there. The ceiling surface feels fine. You can't get a fingernail over any of those grooves, but you can see those two shiny rings there. That's where the old seal was riding. And I'm told that you should not reuse this shaft unless it's in pristine condition. I would not call this one pristine with uh, deep gouges like that. So, if you decide to do this, get the Whirlpool kit that comes with the shaft, don't get an aftermarket one. I neglected to point out that the installation tool actually comes with a bearing, with bearings and a seal too. Uh, so just comparing the OEM bearing on the left with the aftermarket bearing that comes with that tool, I think it's aftermarket, um, this bearing smells like maple syrup. This one smells like sneakers, which tells me it's rubber. Uh, the design is similar. I don't see any numbers printed on the aftermarket bearing like I see on the OEM bearing. The designs are very similar. Neither one is like the, the one that came out of there on the left. So you can see new OEM, new aftermarket, used OEM, the one that came out of there. They're all about the same height. Actually, the, the old one was actually a little bit deeper than the others, but that just could be because the seal's sticking out a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see that. It's rather interesting. And quite honestly, the OEM one lasted eight years. I'm inclined to use the OEM one put back in there. It looks like it's an updated design. I don't know why that thing smells like maple syrup. It's kind of weird. Chinese plastic, Chinese rubber. I don't know. We'll leave that in the drawer. Now the bearings that it came with are also Chinese bearings. They're still in the package, but I figure I'll keep these. Maybe I can use them on something else. It's a little bit easier to service in case they fail. Throw them back in the bearing drawer. So this is the shaft that was in the freezer and I tried beating on it a little bit to get it in. It still wouldn't go in. You can see right here, that lip, that either that bearing is a little bit too small or this shaft is a little bit too big. Um, I don't know if it's a manufacturing problem or what, but I'm gonna see if I can take a little bit of metal off that, this raised edge right here, just a tad, not much. Um, quarter of a thousand, so I'm gonna take some sandpaper and just kinda you know, take a little bit off. Okay, I use some medium and then fine emery cloth to just kinda polish that journal right there. Um, still got a raised edge, which is probably by design, um, but I'm gonna put that in and see if that helps things a little bit. I'll dab a little bit of grease on there too. Maybe, uh, maybe that'll move things along. Okay, I think that did the trick. Now we got the, the shaft sticking out. We got a couple threads sticking out. Um, so hopefully that was what uh, we needed to do. I don't know if that, I don't know. I'm not really exactly sure what's wrong or why that needed to happen. Uh, seems kind of strange to me. Maybe the shaft wasn't machined right or or what, but just polishing that. I greased up the shaft too since uh, we took the corrosion protection layer off. Um, yeah, so hopefully that's what needed to happen. And now we can just uh, tighten it in by hand. Now we're going to take our nut with the thread locker on there. And thread her on. Suck that shaft in more than it will. Um, I'm gonna stick this on the impact driver, see if it can move a little bit. Just should turn it the right way, right? Here we go. Tighten 
in that with a wrench and hold the shaft with some channel locks of a rag. Because right now the shaft is turning a lot. Let's get our wrench. Good rag, we don't want to damage those splines. Turns. This part sucks. Jeez. Buy a new washer. All right, I buzzed it on with the impact. I did have to beat on the shaft a little bit again. I was using this brass punch so as not to damage the shaft. And I was whacking it with this hammer. I hate hammering on shafts with bearings on them, but there's really no choice. This thing wasn't made right. So, uh, I don't know. I have to give a roll pull a C minus or a D plus for machining. Either that or they just included the wrong bearings. I don't know what it is. And personally, I don't really care. Looks like that bearing's a tiny bit crooked too, but it turns. I'm not gonna mess with it. And we got about a thread, part of a thread sticking up there. So I'm happy with where that is. If I can get another year or two out of this washer, I'll be happy. All right, now it's just time to put things back together. Um, everything's where it needs to be. So we'll just start uh, bolting stuff back together. This should be easy compared to getting that damn shaft in. Jeez. That sucked. You pros have any tips? I'm curious. Besides beating on the shaft. you're seeing there is 
Lenz's Law. So there's a breaking effect. Pretty cool. When you spin a coil, or a spinning magnet inside a coil, that produces a current which opposes the motion, or it induces a current in the coil that opposes the movement of the magnet. So now we turn it in reverse, we get a lot of resistance. So I'm assuming there's something up in that computer, maybe a capacitor or whatever that we're charging, that makes it difficult to, to turn. Sorry guys, I'm a little uh, bit tongue-tied. This kind of sucks. And that whole video was recording the wrong direction. Thank you, GoPro. Okay, so we should be done on the bottom of the machine now. So I'm going to flip it over. Right side up. And we'll finish the install. We'll pack the grease with a seal of grease. I need another beer. Then we'll uh, install the seal. Okay, now it's time to get the seal ready. So we're going to pack the seal with grease. I'm going to put a lot in here on the inside. Don't want to get any grease on the outside because you're going to put that adhesive or sealant there. Put some on the inside. It's not really an exact science. But this is really the only form of lubrication this is ever going to have, so I want to make sure that this is a got plenty of grease in there. Okay, got that. Now we're going to put some grease on the shaft inside the washer. you guys can see that you don't want to get any on the plastic because that's where the adhesive is going to be so you want to be real careful so let's put some on the outside here on that stainless steel insert okay now we're going to take some adhesive put that on the outside of the seal well, it doesn't take much. That's where it gets kind of tricky because you don't want the grease or the adhesive to touch. This is where things get messy too. I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive here. You guys can see that. Nasty. It's like rubber cement almost. And I got some on my hands. Lovely. Alright, now it's time to go install this thing. Use the plastic pipe that comes with the tool to mash it down. And you want that seal to be pretty close to flush. Whack it with the hammer a little bit. It's in there good. Okay, that's pretty darn close to flush. Got to come down a little bit more on this side over here. Man, that stuff is nasty. Jeez. All right, well, that's how we ended up. Got the seal installed. Okay, I applied a liberal helping of grease to that shaft and also to the tub, the inside of the tub. 
Let's reinstall the tub on that shaft. Ugh. Fun times. Remind me never to do this again, guys. Okay, it moves up and down nice and freely, which is good. Now we got to put this bad boy on there. We'll grease those splines a little bit. Because this tub has to be able to slide up and down. That's kind of how it works. Otherwise that mechanism doesn't work right. Just putting grease on these splines right here on the inside. I'll put some here too, on the shaft itself. Okay. So now, let's see. This goes on here like so. And this goes on. This piece should go back on like so. I'm gonna put those screws back in. Let's make sure it turns nice and freely. It does. Okay, so we got the screw holes to line up. I clean the screws off in some soap and water. They're pretty disgusting. Uh, where is my screw gun? There it is. And you guys probably can't see a whole lot. Sorry about that. Let me uh, let me change the camera position. That should be better. We'll get these screws back on in here. Get it started. One. Two. I will not bore you guys with this. You've seen it before. Okay, that's all done. Let's grease up these splines on the agitator. Where did I put my grease? Seems to have walked away. Come on. Where did I leave it, guys? Can you, can you see it anymore? No, you don't see it? Alright, find it on my time. Okay, I just put a little bit of grease on those splines too on the agitator. The agitator just slides on. Just like so. And we'll put that bolt back in and we'll hold it in. Ah. Let's see where the socket is at. I think it was. right it was but I gotta find it okay found it buzz it in okay agitators on now we're gonna put that top ring on it only goes on one way because that hose connection is in the back put this on like so put our hose connection on first Wires. Wait on yet. There we go. That should do it. Okay. Now we're just going to snap this on. over the tub, not pinched inside it somewhere. I'll just go around the edges like so. There we go. It spins nicely. And lenses law stops it, right? Okay, good stretch. Not much left. Now we're just gonna put the back on, put it back inside, 
And pray to God it doesn't leak. Jeez, this sucked. Buy a new washer, don't do this. Okay, we got everything buttoned back up in here, and now we just gotta tilt the top back on. And I think we can bring it back inside. Pray to God it works, right? Let's get our tape out of the way. You guys need to see this or it's pretty boring. But we just need to latch this thing back in place. metal screws in the back. Okay, I got the front latch. Now we're going to put these sheet metal screws back on the back. Somewhere. Gotta find the hole. There we go. They don't need to be too tight. You don't want to strip them. That's it. Hopefully it doesn't leak, right? If it doesn't, I'm throwing it out. Okay, the washer is filling now. Got it hooked back up. It really sucks getting it in and out of this room. It's really tiny. It actually doesn't fit through this doorway. It um, interferes with the baseboard, so what I have to do is I have to put on a furniture dolly. The dryer actually had to take apart to get in this room. So, not looking forward to replacing these when that time comes. Keeping an eye out for leaks. I'm doing this just to wash out any loose crud that's in there. One of those Afresh tablets is in there. This is going to be great. I'm so glad this washer is clean. It was so disgusting. There's still some boogers floating in there. That might just be relics of me washing it, though. We'll let it run and see what happens. The washer's in the middle of a spin cycle right now, and it's uh, a heck of a lot quieter than it was, that's for sure. So I think it's running perfectly. Sounds like it's slowing down. No bearing noise whatsoever. So I think we fixed this. Very exciting. Anyway, uh, hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Uh, if you have a Whirlpool Cabrio washer and you have that same noise that I, that I demonstrated in the beginning of the video, um, hopefully you can repair your own washer. It does kind of suck. It's not a fun repair, especially if you're in a cramped Laundry room like this one. I mean, you can't obviously work in here. There's no room in here. Um, but anyway, if you found this video helpful, uh, please subscribe. Thanks and stay safe.